Jesu tava pano, Jesu tava pano, Jesu tava pano, tava pano musitare nu. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill, to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess, we confess that we have sinned, sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. lives. We have denied the goodness of each other, in ourselves, <coughs> and in the world we have created. We repent of the, the evil that enslaves us, us, the evil, the evil we have, we have done, done, and the evil we have done, done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, strengthen us through your Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ, that we may we abide in your love and serve and only your will. will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us and forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. 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 O oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, Trinity, one God, God, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and will be be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy One is in our midst. Oh, come, let us worship. The Holy One is in our midst. Oh, come, let us worship. May all lands be joyful before your God. Serve with gladness and come before your presence with a song. For we know that you are God. You yourself have made us and are yours. We are your people and the sheep of your pasture. We shall enter your gates with thanksgiving, go into your courts with praise, give thanks to you and call upon your name. For you are good, your mercy is
Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah for seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah for 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the millow inwards, and David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. God is great and highly to be praised. God is great and highly to be praised. God is great and highly to be praised. In the city of our God is the holy hill. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion. The very center of the world and the city of the great sovereign. God is in its citadels. God is known to be its sure refuge. Behold, the monarchs of the earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astonished. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They arrived like a woman in childbirth. The ships of the sea when the east wind shatters them. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the city of the God of hosts, in the city of our God, God has established it forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion, walk round about it, count the number of its towers. Consider well its bulwarks, examine its strongholds, that you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever, and shall be our guide forevermore. God is great and highly to be praised. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, 
but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Before I ventured forth, even while I was very young, I sought wisdom openly in my prayer. In the four courts of the temples, I asked for her, and I will seek her to the end. From first blossom to early fruit, she has been the delight of my heart. My foot has kept firmly to the true path. Diligently from my youth have I pursued her. I inclined my ear a little and received her. I found for myself much wisdom and became adept in her. To the one who gives me wisdom will I give glory, for I have resolved to live according to her way. From the beginning, I gained courage from her. Therefore, I will not be forsaken. In my inmost being, I have been stirred to seek her. Therefore, I have gained a good possession. As my reward, the Almighty has given me the gift of language, and with it I will offer praise to God. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and her brother of the, and the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me go back. And then he went about among the villages teaching. 
He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Now hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Jesus had been on the road with his disciples, and he went home, bringing them with him. As a devout man, he went to the synagogue and began to teach on the Sabbath, speaking with such wisdom and obvious divine power that the people were astounded. He thought they knew this man because they knew his family. They knew what he had been doing as a tradesman, and they had formed a lens through which to regard him that clouded their ability to really see and understand who was teaching them. It was as though their memories of Jesus before his ministry clouded their vision of him in what was then the present moment. His reception must have stung when they took offense at his teaching. Did they remember the prophets of their heritage? Did they know of prophets in their own day? What about our day? Where are the prophets of old? Do they still exist outside of the biblical narrative? And if they don't, why not? Where did they go? Assuming they're still here, how would we recognize a prophet if we saw one? What would it mean for us if we encountered a prophet? What would it mean if we didn't? If we believe that God is alive and eternal and that we are God's own adopted children, then we can be confident that God is still speaking to us and that God is still speaking through us to one another. How often have we been told that once Christ ascended to the Father, we became his hands and feet on this planet? It seems as though it would be completely inconsistent with the faithfulness of God to stop raising up prophets to speak hard truths and hold us accountable to the promise we have as beings created in the image of God. So either God has not called a prophet recently, or we've just forgotten how to recognize one. Within our canon and the apocryphal books, there are texts that speak of a time when prophets ceased to exist sometime after the Babylonian exile. Zechariah and 1 Maccabees are examples. Scholarly articles refer to a rabbinic tradition that says that the Holy Spirit withdrew from Israel after the deaths of Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. But there are later books of the Hebrew Bible and the Apocrypha that continue to speak of prophets. And even in the first century of the Common Era, Josephus, the historian, speaks of prophets in his own time. Prophets appear in the New Testament, and Jesus speaks of them. Clearly, the gift of prophecy was described in the early church, and then what happened? Are the times we live in no less worthy of God's intervention through the mouth of a prophet? Biblical scholar James Kugel describes what he calls the revelatory state of mind that characterizes prophetic encounters with God. Kugel says, it is as though the person can't really see what is in plain sight. They become confused, as Abram did when God caught his attention with what he believed to be three men approaching him on a hot day in the desert. Perhaps the human mind just cannot process a divine encounter in real time in anything but a fog. The revelatory state of mind where the literal, oh my God, moment 
happens at the last moment or even after the manifestation of the Holy One has ended. Genesis tells us that it was God approaching Abram, but when Abram lifted his eyes and saw, his brain told him it was three men. God came to the patriarch unbidden, cloaked as something else, implying that the Holy One gets the attention of humans with some one or something familiar in human terms and then delivers a message. Take a look at the stories of God encountering human beings all through the Bible. Whether as a curiously burning bush or a man wrestling all night long or a cloud on a mountaintop or angels announcing the improbable, God cannot easily be perceived or described in concrete terms. So, of course, throughout the history of humankind, whenever God could sense the human condition in danger, a messenger who could speak in such a way that humans could hear would seem to be an effective approach. Back to Jesus teaching in the synagogue in his hometown. The people were astounded, and yet they did not see. They stayed in a fog even while they were shown words of wisdom and deeds of power. They did not see that they were having an encounter with God, but categorized their experience of him as Yeshua the carpenter with no rights and no credentials to stand up and teach. Even after he came right out and said, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their their own kin and in their own house. They didn't get it that he was talking about himself and they actually took offense at the wisdom he offered. What does that teach us about the willingness of people to accept that an improbable encounter with God's chosen messenger is even possible? In the day of Jesus, there were at least some people who could see who he was, could muster enough faith to approach him for healing convinced it could happen just by touching his clothes. But others, and in particular those who were described as religious authorities, could not see, could not really see. Something happened in antiquity that plagues us still in our time. Humans begged God for structure or hierarchy. Give us judges so we don't have to trouble ourselves to discern right from wrong. Give us kings, because the judges didn't work out to our satisfaction. Give us a Messiah. Give us a young and married pastor with 2.5 children with which to revive our Sunday school program and our shrinking church. Through the abnegation of personal responsibility to maintain a deep connection to God, We created institutions which gained a life of their own, which began to be inward looking, focused on institutional acquisition and preservation of power. Religious institutions have presumed to take control over how an individual's faith in God is exercised, policing the adherence to doctrine, tradition, and boxing God into a vision so narrow that we have failed to see, to really see God God with us and God in all people. And instead, we look for a God we have created in the image of us. Jesus was right. A prophet is all but invisible to the people who knew them before God called them to deliver a message of accountability and hope. So I invite you to consider the possibility that yes, prophets are still among us. Perhaps you know one. Perhaps you are one. Perhaps the moment is right to lift up our eyes and truly see beyond the moment of confusion when God calls to the prophet and behold the message to repent, to be accountable, and to act on behalf of all of God's beloved creation. May the prophet within you rise and shine. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray.
Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the church in every place, its mission and its ministry, remembering especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the presiding bishop of this church, and, and Marianne, our own Bishop of Washington. Let us pray that the freeing word that God has given us be spread abroad and bring justice and peace wherever uh, it can reach. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. Let us pray for this nation of ours, and let us pray for all nations. But on this 245th anniversary of the freedom of this nation from the tyranny of the English king, let us remember what independence means and guide us to promote independence amongst all our people and independence throughout the world that all can be free and not enslaved. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world, that where there is warfare, weapons can be laid aside. In this difficult time, let us remember particularly the people of Afghanistan as US troops depart and the maintenance of some kind of justice becomes a responsibility of the Afghan people. Let us pray as well for the troubles of the Middle East and most particularly in the land that for us is holy, the land of Israel the land of Palestine, the land of our origins. May peace break out, hatred subside, and all learn to love one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray that we all have a regard for the care of this world of ours, this creation that God has made, that we become preservers rather than despoilers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
And let us pray for this metropolis of ours, the city of Washington, the surrounding suburbs, that our mayor Muriel, the governors of Maryland and Virginia, the legislative bodies of the three jurisdictions pursue, pursue justice and not power. And all seek to better, seek to build a better communion, a community for us to live in. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We're called this day to pray for particular people in our community. Let us lift up in prayer Alex, Alex S. Bertha, Bishop Elect Paula, Kaki, Kyle, Catalina and her siblings, Doris, Douglas, Eduardo, Anadina, Ernie, the Flores family, Gloria, Hannah and her family, her grandmother, especially her grandmother, Ruth, Harold, Jan, Jess and his father, Joel, Joseph, Lucas, Kathy, Kathy S, Lorenzo and his family, Larry, Lindsay, Mercedes, Michelle, Rebecca, Renee, Raina, Renee, Richard, Ridgely, Ron, Ron S, Solomon, Santa Helena, our seminarians, Jennifer and David, Stephanie, Steve, Spencer, Tricia, Viterina, let us unmute now and uh, lay before each other and before God uh, those, those particular prayers that we bring to church today. I ask your prayers for my niece, Rebecca, and my sister, Lisa, that, that God would be with them as they mend their relationship and the brokenness in both of their lives for forgiveness and courage and wisdom that they would put their, their lives back together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pray for Sarah who has stage four pancreatic cancer for her husband, Russell that the healing power of God would touch them this day and always, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for the uh, Surfside community in Miami, for the rescue workers, families, for the deceased, for survivors, for those who are watching and waiting and do not give up hope. May they know God's presence. May they know the gifts of support from one another from this country, from our administration, as we wrap our arms around them and weep with them and grieve with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I pray God's blessing upon my father-in-law, Harry, as he nears the end of his life. 
uh, on my sister-in-law, Anne, as she struggles with how best to care for him and for Richard as he travels this week to be with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I offer a prayer of thanksgiving for my grandmother who celebrates her birthday today. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us give thanks as well this day for the ministry of uh, our friend Kathy Grieb, uh, a priest, a woman who went into the priesthood from this church. Uh, she becomes the director of the Center for Anglican uh, Communion Studies at Virginia Theological uh, Seminary. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us remember this day our beloved dead, asking that they go from strength to strength in God's presence, praying especially for the right Reverend Carolyn Irish, former Bishop of Utah, who died this past week. And lifting up as well, my late wife Ginger, who died 17 years ago last Wednesday. May her soul, their souls, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Any others of the blessed dead that anyone would like to remember this day? My father, whose uh, birthday would have been today, and for that matter, my grandfather, who also had his birthday today. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. Let us then rejoice with the blessed saints uh, and, and pray together. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Announcements. Does anybody have any? I have one. Um, I would uh, like to invite you to make sure that you are with us for worship two weeks from today on July 18th, and specifically to remain with us for coffee hour, as we will have with us Ben Morgan who will share his powerful testimony about the change work that he has done as a participant of Samaritan ministry. For those of you who have heard Ben speak and talk about the work that he has done to, to put his life back together, it's quite extraordinary. So mark your calendars, 
now for July 18th So you and stay for coffee hour because you won't want to miss hearing Ben. Any other announcements? Okay. Oh, we will have coffee hour, by the way. And with your forbearance and patience and having me on mute so you don't hear me say all the things I might say trying to send you to Facebook group rooms or, or no, not or breakout rooms, but I'll get it. So if you want to hang around and stay for coffee hour, we will do it. And thanks for so many of you for showing up on a holiday weekend. Um, particularly Mary Ella, it's so nice to see you. Wait, where'd she go? Did she drop off? Oh my gosh. Anyway, she was here for a while, so it was great to see her. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. <laughs> peace. 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 Please join in the prayer of St. John Christostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working within us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation in the church and in Jesus, in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.